Welcome to 60 Seconds with KG. This is episode six of the extended version. Today, I'm going to finish my mini dive into my favorite dribble drive drills. And in episode four, I went over my favorite uh, four on three paint touch game. In episode five, I went through uh, the version of our one on one attack and our four on four cutthroat rules. And today, I'm going to go through some full court stuff that I really like that can really, uh, I think, develop some of your players in, in a dribble drive motion style offense. The first one I'm gonna show is a one-on-one -on -one drill. And again, this really works well. If, you know, in high school, we had a short court, side court. It really worked well on this. We played some one-on-one -on -one full court. Defender here, offensive player here, you know, your X's team over on this side, your O team over on here. You would start, and a lot of coaches had a lot of different rules. I know when I first started talking with Vance Wahlberg back in, Gosh, 2005, you know, you had to make a bump first. And then that became pretty physical and some other stuff. And, and then, so finally the rule was we use is when you break the, the circle here at midcourt, then the defense could start to play. So we play one-on-one -on -one this way, the O trying to get by, the X trying to play some defense. Now the X on the shot, one shot only drill, the X now will get the rebound and an O has come out and met. And so they're waiting. And so the drill comes back the other way. And now they play one-on-one. -on -one. So it's a continuous one-on-one -on -one drill. Uh, one team against another, blue against white, whatever colors you might have. It's great for your guards and your breakdowns. And again, especially great if you might have a short court, a high school coach that might have a sideways court that's a little bit shorter. Uh, my next drill I'd like to share with you today is a great two-on-two -two drill. All credit to Doc Shepler at uh, Pinewood High School. And if you get a chance to go on YouTube and watch Pinewood play, uh, Doc does a terrific job. Uh, in this case, we have our players here. I'll just go O's and X's so it makes it really simple for you. Let's say the O's start with the ball first. Two X's back on D. And again, normally O's and X's are defense and offense, but today I'm just using them as two teams. Players are here. We start out the drill two on two. And they attack. And again, you could work your kickbacks, kickups, space. Uh, you could run a little fan action if you want to. Whatever it is that you want to work on that day or just let them play. Just absolutely let them play. I think that's what we need to do more of as coaches. Once we've given them the tools in the toolbox, allow them to express their freedom. So in the, this case, let's say the O's come down. They run a little fan and, and the O here gets to the, to the rim and scores. Okay, at this point now, the X, and again, we usually we play with one foot back on this drill. Okay, uh, the X's, now we don't take the ball out of bounds. We're just going to play the next two group of X's start moving down the floor in an outlet situation. And the two O's are now back on D. So they've got to transition back. They've got to transition back and play two on two against those X's coming down the floor. So again, I'll go to the next diagram so you guys can see. We would have the X's now attacking. Let's say it got outlet to this side. And those two O's that just scored are trying to get back. And sometimes, Sometimes you'll find that, let's say this O got stuck back here and temporarily it's a little two on one with a chaser. So there's lots of scenarios. Sometimes both O's get stuck down here and it's an easy kick ahead. And if you remember, our X's are standing here and the O's for the next group are there. And again, X's come down. Let's say they get to the rack and score it. The O's quickly take it out of bounds, throw it to the next group. And now those X's are back on defense transition. Again, a great two-on-two -two drill that actually can expand to three-on-three. -three. And this is all in my transition drills book if you want to check that one out. The next one I'm going to talk about is one of Wahlberg's blood drills, but a little bit of a tweak to it because I know that numbers-wise, not everybody can run my favorite version of the blood drill, which is the four-on-four. -four. I always thought the four-on-four -four was probably the best. Two-on-two -two is great to start to teach the relocation and the aggressive mindset, but there's just not enough traffic to make a realistic situation. Uh, this would be what we would go a half court blood drill. So O's against X's and our O here and our X defender and our O here. And again, depending on your philosophy, how you have, we would do our four on four blood. And then this would be in the half court. Just again, you would alternate. You'd have all your guards over here, your O's and your X's, your O's and your X's, your O's and your X's. These guys can fill in probably takes at least maybe 12 players to run this really efficiently. You could break it down to three on three if you wanted to and just play the two man side if you didn't have enough bodies. 
we love this. And when I was a high school coach, when we combine our varsity and our JV and we play this full court and we would play at half court. If I wanted to do a lot of teaching, if it was a teaching day. We did it a lot this way. So again, we start out coaches here, throws the ball in same rule. As soon as they break that line, then the defense can drop. The only dilemma again, with some of the blood drills and coaches remember this is you don't have that second top guard that takes away the nail defensively. So you got to worry about that a little bit. And that's why I think the cutthroat stuff I showed last week can help. So in this case, let's say the drive goes this way, the defender's trying to chase. We're going to relocate our big, depending on where they stay. Now, again, we come into here, we read the corner, what's going on here, the player flat. It might be a backdoor situation. It could be, I'm going to rack it through the drop zone and that player starts to lift. This player starts to lift. If it's a cover down, we throw that backside drag. And again, you could play it live until the defense gets it. You can allow one put back. You could put any rules that you want on those. And again, these are some of my breakdown drills that I really like for teaching the dribble drive. A one-on-one, -on -one, just go after each other kind of drill, two on two full court transition, a continued right here in this diagram, and then four on four blood. And you'll find a ton of information online about the blood drills. And I would emphasize here, coaches, some sort of scoring system, you know, uh, things like uh, threes might be worth five points. Uh, you might have uh, two foot finishes. I'm a big believer in that. Give them an extra point for a two foot finish. Uh, you know, turnovers minus five, things like that, I think are really big when you do your drills. Everybody loves finding new drills, small sided games and everything like that. But I think this is the secret sauce in there is developing a scoring system that rewards, rewards what you're trying to teach, your philosophy, what you believe. Because I'm telling you guys, if you do this, they'll do what you want them to do. They'll, they'll start looking for five pointers and they'll do it all the time. Hopefully that helped you coaches. Good luck.